International eyes are once again focused on the stricken Japanese Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. A team of international experts sent by the UN's nuclear agency has arrived in the country to probe what's happened at the complex. Crippled by the double blow of earthquake and tsunami that slammed it and much of Japan's northeast coast back in March. Michael Waitman and his team spent a second day in meetings with officials Wednesday. The head of Japan's nuclear crisis task force says the U.N. investigators have submitted a long list of queries, and Japanese officials will do their best to answer them. Ahead of planned visits in the coming days to three nuclear plants, Waitman says he's not ready yet to answer key questions himself, even one as basic as whether the quake itself contributed to the accident or was it the giant wave alone that started the crisis at the beleaguered Fukushima Daiichi. Uh, no, I haven't uh, done any analysis of that. We have just got here. Uh, we have just started our discussions. Um, we will come to our own views on the information that we seek and we'll seek to learn these lessons on behalf of the world. But one observer thinks for Japan, the lessons need to extend beyond the nuclear arena into the broader issue of the way the government operates. Robert Dujaric teaches Asian studies at Temple University. I think the most important thing is how the government will rethink the management of unplanned crisis, not only in the nuclear industry, but in other areas, because that's where there was clearly a problem Still, the wider world remains focused on what's happening at Fukushima Daiichi. Analysis released by plant operator TEPCO now suggests fuel rods in all three nuclear reactor units that had been operating March 11th mostly melted during the early days of the crisis. It's a sign the accident was more serious than officials have acknowledged before. Many are no doubt watching anxiously to see whether it means TEPCO was being too optimistic in its timetable to bring the plant to a clean, cold shutdown by January. Karen Sloan, The Associated Press.